What the hell, man? How did you make $100,000 from just one blue whale video? That's freaking insane. Even weirder, blue whales with about 3,000 times more cells than humans don't seem to get cancer at all, really. This is Pito's Paradox. Nothing much, Geekbot. We focus on creating high-quality, simple animation videos. They resonate well with the audience, racking up millions of views. People love the content we put out, and that's how we've grown to over 20 million subscribers. Wow, bro, you're a freaking genius. So don't worry, my YouTube fam. In this video, I'll break down step-by-step step how you too can create super high-quality videos like Kirk's Kazat, videos that are proven to get tens of millions of views. To start off, making videos like Kirk's Gazat requires you to have a killer idea that can be turned into an amazing script. But how does Kirk's Gazat write their scripts, which consistently bring them tens of millions of views? And have you seen their editing style anywhere else on YouTube before? Somewhere their rocket growth on YouTube is because of this unique style. The way they do storytelling with masterpiece editing and animations. All this hard work has today made the channel reach 22 million subscribers with only 214 videos. So today, I will tell you step by step how they make these types of killer videos that stand out in the crowd. In detail, from research to scripting to full animation tutorials, everything one by one. I bet you will learn a lot from this video, which will tell you how to build your brand on YouTube. And I will discuss how you can learn this type of video making and develop your own style. I have researched this topic deeply just to tell you everything so that you can get all the information in one place. So tighten up your seatbelts and we are good to go. As Kirk's Gazat says, before making a video, they pick a topic, and Kirk's Gazat very smartly decides on their topics. When searching for a topic, they keep three things in mind. First, the topic should be quite relatable, or there should be recent discussions about it. For example, a few days ago, their video came out on the topic of nuclear bombs. As we all know, nuclear bombs are frequently discussed, and there are always warlike situations somewhere in the world like the current Cold War between Russia and the USA, or the situation with North Korea's leader Kim, and the Israel-Palestine War. The second most important role in selecting a topic is whether the topic is an all-time favorite. In this case, yes, nuclear bombs will always be an evergreen topic. This is proven by their five-year-old video, C-Nuke, with 33 million views, or the video from four years ago, Detonated All Nuclear Bombs, with 31 million views. And as expected, their video released a few days ago also fetched more than 5 million views. And now comes the third most important thing before choosing any topic. Does the topic interest people? Is there a demand for it? Yes, yes. From the time of World War II, Japan nuclear bomb tragedy to today, nuclear bombs are a fascinating and interesting topic as they release a sense of fear and curiosity in people's minds. So this is the whole system of how Kirk's Gazat chooses topics. Now that the topic has been selected, where does this guy get such strong and accurate information from? As he himself says, play the research part till stupid. Yes, having a good topic is of no use unless you bring completely out of the box information about it. And to gather this information, it takes weeks and weeks of research, reading through numerous news articles, research papers, and listening to experts to get different viewpoints on a topic. Then he divides all this information into four parts. Whether the information is fascinating, he puts it in the fascinating box. For example, the two nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 killed nearly 200,000 people. If the information is serious, for example, in 1961, Russia tested the Tsar Bomba, which was 3,333 times more powerful than the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. If the information is personal, like, I will make a bunker in my new house, and lastly, the stupid information, which is generally known by everyone, like, nuclear bombs are dangerous to humanity. So in this way, he categorizes all the information so that things can be organized well, and we have plenty of resources available during the writing process. Now starts the writing part. In this part, Kirk's Gazat tries to explain complicated things in a simple way because he knows that the video needs to be made familiar to every age group, so the topic needs to be understood as if even a five-year-old child could understand it, and he has been successful in doing this to some extent. You can check his videos, his explanation skills are too good, but you know, more important than the explanation is storytelling. And behind every viral video of his are these storytelling skills that are setting YouTube on fire. He explains dangerous topics of science and nature in such a simple, story-like manner that people don't leave these videos. And before you know it, 
higher retention equals higher views. While writing, all these points are kept in mind, and then it is fact-checked, grammar-checked, and refined a lot. Every single thing is micro-analyzed. It's all in the details, so no mistake can be tolerated. So if you want to write such killer scripts, always follow these three steps. First, gather as much information as possible related to the topic you've chosen. In the second step, divide the information like Kirkskisath, and many big creators do, distinguishing which information is scrap and which is mind-blowing. And lastly, with all this information, try to form a story. You can also seek help from ChatGPT for this. Remember, the better the story, the better the script will be. And now, after the writing part is finished, comes the narration part. For the narration part, he uses his own voice, which he records calmly in a studio or a noise-free place. You can also record your voice with a phone, or you can use AI voices. AI software like Eleven Labs is literally doing well. Eleven Labs can be availed with your ChatGPT4 subscription, and using it is extremely simple. Just paste your script here, then select the voice you want, and that's it. As soon as you click Generate, your voice will be ready. And you can also adjust the pacing and pitch of the voice to make it more real. Now that we have the voice ready, we come to the most important part. How does he make such unique videos? I mean, we've seen animations before, but his style is totally unique and awesome. So today I'll show you his entire style step by step by re-editing it and teaching you part by part how it's all done. Basically with this style, he first clarifies things in his mind with the help of drawing and imagination, like how to show a line to the viewer and how to represent it, all that. Then he makes the illustration with a pen and paper. After doing the same step throughout the entire video, now the real game begins. To create illustrations in the style of Kirkskazat, start simple, especially if you've never done it before. Begin by taking a screenshot of an object, and try to figure out what parts it's made up of. Then create those shapes one by one and put them together. Don't worry if it doesn't look like what you've imagined. This is a learning process, and learning always starts with failing. Look at your art and figure out which part looks off. You might even write it down and use that knowledge to make it better next time. Now to get shapes to look like Kirk Kazad's style, first make the corners of the main objects of your illustrations always round. This will give it a softer look. To enhance this feeling, just add a fat stroke with the same color as the base shape. This will give it the typical Kirk Kazad look. Another advantage is that the corners will keep having the same corner radius even if you scale them. So you won't have to worry about things like this anymore. Once you've done that, add even more strokes for details on your illustration. Make sure that all of the strokes have the same thickness because this will give your object a more balanced feel. Of course, you can always make exceptions. For shading your objects, you can use both strokes and shapes for the lighting along the edges. Just duplicate the base shape Remove the fill and lighten up the stroke color. Then use the scissor tools to cut the shape apart and delete parts you don't need. The same goes for shading, for highlights or shadows inside the object. You can use shapes. I always do it by duplicating the base object twice, moving the second duplicate up, selecting both of the upper shapes and subtracting them using the Shape Builder tool. Then I simply adjust the color of the new shape so it fits the object below. If you want to animate the object later, I would recommend working with masks. Also, when working with strokes, I recommend you to get into the habit of working with the Transform tab because in here, you will find two checkboxes that will make your life a whole easier when scaling objects that have a stroke applied. If you don't see the Transform tab, just go to Window Transform. Another tool that might make your life easier, especially when working with curved strokes, is the Curved Making Tool in Illustrator. This tool allows you to create and edit curves. The cool thing about this is that these curves will always adjust to the distance between your anchor points. This is especially helpful when creating unsteady objects like hair or limbs. You could basically create a whole character just out of strokes. But I wouldn't recommend using that. Instead, still use shapes as well because working with only strokes can be pretty annoying. However, whenever you want to create a flexible object that you might want to animate later, using strokes will always keep you on the safe side. So I've basically said everything about using shapes and strokes. So now I will tell you how Kutzkazat uses shading in his videos to stand out. It's animations from the crowd. Well, there's a whole spectrum of reasons. For starters, it injects depth into your illustrations, transforming them from flat, lifeless shapes into captivating visuals that leap off the screen. Imagine your art without shading. It's like a dance of flat silhouettes, lacking dimension. But with the magic of shading, your creations step into a whole new realm of depth and intrigue. But there's more. 
Shading isn't just about depth. It's a subtle guide for the viewer, hinting at distances, textures, and the very essence of objects. A metallic surface, with its dance of light and reflection, tells a different story from the quiet simplicity of matte finishes. Shading can also play with perception, casting background elements in shadow to draw the eye to the vibrant drama unfolding in the foreground. The realm of shading is vast and ripe for exploration, offering endless opportunities for artistic play and experimentation. And let's not forget the emotional palette shading can add to your work. Consider a simple scene devoid of shading. It's straightforward, perhaps even bland. But introduce shading and suddenly there's mood, atmosphere, a whisper of emotion. Shading can turn the dial on drama, bathe your senses in a joyful glow, or cast a somber shadow, depending on the narrative you wish to weave. So how do we harness this powerful tool? The journey begins in the real world. The best reference there is for understanding light and shadow. Venture outside, observe the interplay of light on various surfaces, and capture those moments. These observations are your gold mine. Start by sketching them with a humble pencil, grounding your art in reality before venturing into abstraction. This practice sharpens your sense of how light shapes and defines objects. As you delve deeper, introduce color to your sketches, watching how it responds to light. Remember, color is a chameleon, shifting shades based on its environment. That green apple under a red light? It might just surprise you with a rosy blush. Capture these real-world nuances until they become second nature. And then with confidence, bring your insights into the digital realm of Illustrator. With you can create another look. We will go through the process of creating each of these elements, and at the end, I will have a little exercise for you. Okay, so when we are at Illustrator, let's just use this simple circle as our reference object. So first of all, let's create a highlight for this object. For that, I will simply go by choosing the ellipse tool and just making a little circle like this. This is pretty simple, and you can also move it around a little. And then, just go ahead and either if your light source is really bright, or if this object really reflects a lot of light, if it's a shiny surface. I would go with just pure white, but you could also go with another shade, a different variant of the shade. Let's change this back, and let's go up here to our recolor, our artwork tool, to our color changing tool, as I called it before. Let's open this, and then you will probably get this window here first. I prefer to work with the older version of it, which you can get by pressing this button down here, and then you will get this window. If you want to keep it this way, just check this checkbox. And if you open it up next time, it will just appear like this. So what we're going to do in here is firstly, turn up the lightness a bit, then turn down the saturation a little bit, and this could already be enough for a highlight. But if you want to go for a really Kotzkazagtish look, I would recommend you to move the slider in either direction and just look which shade looks better. I think it looks better if you go into the more reddish area of the slider. So let's move it up here and let's just a little more just just like this. Now if you're happy with this, you can just click OK and it will be applied. And now you get a little cool highlight. So the next thing we want to do is create a core shadow. Now you could simply go ahead and just add the shadow along this edge here. But if you want to go really precisely, if you want to make it really realistic, of course, the shadow would have to be in the same angle as this highlight on the opposite side. To ensure that we can actually put it on the same angle as this highlight, we could just draw in a little guideline for us. For that, let's just choose the line tool. Now let's drag your line. And to make sure that it's equally long on each side, you can press Alt so it gets dragged out of the center. And if you want to make sure that it's completely horizontal, you can hold shift at the same time as well. So it gets snapped to your X axis and just give it a straw color and just move it a little upwards while holding down shift. You can make sure that it snaps to 45 degrees. Now we've got our light in place and now we can simply adjust the highlight to this position. So just grab it and make sure that your smart guides are turned on. If they're not, you can simply go up here to view and then to smart guides. All right, so now we got our light in place and now we can just create the shadow on the other side. So for that, we will just go to our layers panel, duplicate the base object twice and select the one that is at the very top. Kurtz Kazat's videos might be sinister, but they always keep a happy and positive attitude. And that is mostly achieved through their color palettes. 
So do you want to learn how to murder innocent birds in a fabulous manner too? Well then, let's jump right in. So now we are taking a look behind the birds and colors of Kyrgyzat and trying to find the secret which makes their video so appealing. Now we're going to find out how Kyrgyzat uses colors and contrast to add visual and emotional depth to their images and how we can reproduce that effect ourselves. Furthermore, before I start making the video, I reached out to an art director at Kyrgyzat and asked him a few questions to better understand their workflow and provide you with the most accurate information. There will be quotes of him being displayed at certain points of the video. So now, put on your Kyrgyzat merch, fetch your pet duck, and enjoy the video. Section 1. Convey the story One of the first questions to ask yourself when creating a new illustration or animation is, what do I want to convey with the image and how do I want my viewers to feel about it? Let's take this scene from the video, what if we nuke a city? For example, in this scene, Kyrgyzat explains how you'd feel after surviving a nuclear attack on your city. It's very dramatic and the mood is depressing, so it needs an according touch of color. The palette mostly consists of dark shades mixed with a decent amount of warm hues like red and yellow. These colors automatically create a dark, smothering, and threatening atmosphere which perfectly fits the scene. Now on the other side, there are, of course, peaceful and beautiful scenes as well, like this one. It features a bunch more vibrant colors and makes you feel all warm and cozy, which is exactly the intention behind it. So knowing what the final shot will look and especially feel like can be really helpful in deciding what colors to choose. After that, Kyrgyzat usually continues by looking at references for their scenes and creating first rough illustrations from that. When we start a new video, we first illustrate a few moods to find out how the video feels. This means that you define certain dominant colors which make up the atmosphere of the video. So you just jump into the color wheel and try things out. I often take photos as references to find color clues. The whole thing is then usually interpreted in a shorthand way completely exaggerated with too much saturation and little black. If the mood stands, one can deliver a rough color palette for the respective video, which we then use as a guideline. Building a story around your illustrations, no matter if still or animated, is essential for keeping the viewer engaged and curious. One of the fundamental tools for telling your story is guiding the viewer's eye toward the subject of matter. And in order to do that, there is a simple tool we can use. Section 2. Contrast Using contrast thoughtfully in your scene can automatically organize it and divide it into multiple sections which the viewer can explore one by one. For example, Kyrgyzat likes to keep the background of scenes mostly darker or lighter than the foreground so you can focus on what's going on in the important area. And this is the only one way to use contrast. Now, the word contrast is a stretchable term and can refer to many things. But in our case, it refers to the contrast between shades and the contrast between colors. Let's start with the most obvious contrast there is, black and white. This is the boldest contrast you can possibly create. Right now, everything is evenly spaced and balanced out. However, if we take, let's say, this white side and shrink it down, you will now get a focus point, which your eyes will automatically follow. As a rule of thumb, you can say that we are always drawn to the more contrasty part of an image. So if we now take this rule and apply it to an image, the subject of matter should always have the most contrast to its surroundings. So the viewer has an easier time finding what's important in that image. This also helps you tell your story, since this way you can determine what part of the image seems relevant to your audience and what part doesn't. The same rule applies to the contrast of color, though it's a bit more complicated this time. Instead of having only one variation of contrast, we now have five. I won't go through all of them since this topic tends to get boring quite quickly, but I will give you an overview of the most important ones. Types of contrast First of all, we have the most popular and probably also most used contrast, the complementary contrast. It combines two colors laying on opposite sides of the color wheel and therefore creates the boldest possible contrast in colors. It not only combines two fundamentally different hues, but also bright and dark colors, making them differ from each other even more. And even though it's quite a harsh one, our brains tend to like the combinations this contrast creates. Blue and orange is probably the most famous example of that, as it's seen in many, many movies and TV shows these days. The artists of Kyrgyzad tend to use it too, not only to create nice looking images, but also to separate two layers of an image from one another. For example, fore and background. Furthermore, the variant of contrast 
even holds the secret as to why Kirkazat's illustrations always pop the way they do. Colors of this contrast appear brighter and more prominent together, making already strong colors seem even brighter and more shiny when combined. So we just uncovered another secret of Kirkazat's style. The second contrast we will look at is the monochromatic one. This is actually the one we used in the last video to shade our objects. Different from the other ones, this contrast doesn't combine multiple hues, but instead takes one hue and separates it into different shades. This way the same color gets displayed alongside its darker and brighter self, making the contrast the perfect method to give depth to your illustrated objects. The last contrast we look at is the triadic one. This contrast takes three evenly spaced colors from the palette and puts them together, creating a quite harsh but still pleasing combination. By using all of these contrasts together, you can guide your viewers through the video only by colors and make your images look pleasing and interesting at the same time. In the recent Kirkusat videos, the sound designs are simply phenomenal. Perfectly placed sound effects at the right moments elevate the videos, blending seamlessly and stirring viewers' feelings and emotions. This approach helps Kirkusat in making their videos go viral. I hope you got a ton out of the case study, but let's be real for a sec. I bet a bunch of you might treat it like a cool video to watch, have a little wow moment, and then just move on. Not really doing much with what you've learned. I totally get it. A few months back, I was right there with you, just soaking up info without putting it into work. But you know how it goes, right? Until that light bulb moment hits, it's easy to let all this gold just slip through your fingers. So here's a straight up invitation for those of you who are ready to catch that light bulb. I recently turned a single video into an $8,000 win with just 14k subscribers. Yep, you heard that right. It's not just a story, it happened. And I've laid out the whole process in a free masterclass you can find on my website. Just hit the link in the description or check the first comment below this video and you're all set. Dive in and who knows, this could be the moment everything clicks for you. See you there and hey, looking forward to our next chat. Goodbye for now.